Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company, with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Today we're at Rio Bravo School, home of the Gauchos, and we're here to... Do the well, today we're at Rio Bravo School, working with fifth grade students, and we're going to do a little bit of math right now. So what we need to do is, first of all, make sure that we're clear on vocabulary. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the words that are up on the board right now. So we have some, so we'll look at the words in the black on the left first. Sum, difference, prime, and composite. Do you guys have any idea what any of those mean? I know sum means even. Sum means even? Good. I know the difference is the answer in a subtraction problem. Okay. Um, composite is like a number that <laughs> You're on the right track. It's a number. It's a number that you, that is, you make like a table and uh, then composite is one number that is different than the other. Okay. So we'll take a look at those also. Um, prime and composite. Prime is a number that is not easily able to be multiplied to get to that number. And composite is a number that is easy to multiply numbers by to get to that answer. Okay, so let's take a look. If we want the sum of two numbers, am I gonna add, subtract, multiply, or divide them? Add. I'm gonna add them, all right? So if we want the sum, we're going to add two numbers. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. If we want to find the difference between two numbers, I think one of you said it before, what will we need to do? Subtract. We'll need to subtract. A prime number, you said, was one that's not easily multiplied to get to it? Yeah. Okay. Can you give me an example of a prime number? Three. Three. Three is a perfect prime number because what factors or what can you multiply to get to three? You'd have to do like two times one plus one. You could, but if we just want to multiply instead of adding anything. Three times one. It's just three times one. That's it. There's no other way to get there, right? Okay. Can you think of another composite or a prime number? Two. Two. Okay. Two is a prime number, right? Because it's only two times one and that's it. Seven. Seven. All right. What about some composite numbers now? What's the difference there? Sixteen. 16, right? Now, how do we know that's composite and not prime? Because it has more than one times itself. Right, so it has other factors, right? Yeah. Numbers that go into it, right? Because we can go one times 16, and what else can we do? Two times eight. Two times eight. Anything else? Um, four times four. Four times four. Anything else? And one times 16. We've got 1 times 16, right? So we have all the factors up there, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have this vocabulary, and we're all good with what they mean, right? Okay. Turn your paper over. And it says, Happy New Year. Is it really New Year right now? No. no. It's the, this is the new school year, right? But we'll go ahead and go with this. It says, What is the next year when? Now, the first one says, The sum of the digits is 11. Now, based on the vocabulary we just did, do we know what sum means? Yes, it's yes. the answer to an addition problem. Right. So we want to know the next year, because what year is this? 2019. Okay, so up at the top, right, 2019, so we remember where we're at. We're only going to go backwards in time. 
So let's take a look at this first one. When the sum of the digits is equal to 11. Now, if we took 2019 and we added up those numbers, what would we get? 39. Well, 2, 0, 1, and 9. Because you're adding 20 and 19. So just take 2, 0, 1, and 9, what do you get? 12. 12. So the sum equals 12, doesn't it? Yeah. But what do we want the sum to equal? 11. 11. So let's take a look at the next year, 2020. If we go 2, 0, 2, 0, what does that add up to? 4. 4. Four. That's not going to work. 2021. Uh, 5. 5. 2022. 6. You get the idea? Yeah. yeah. So you can work together or individually. When is the next year when the numbers are going to equal 11? Think about the next year that all of the numbers are going to add up to 11. 2027? 2027? Yeah. Let's see if anybody can get one sooner because we want to know the next year because 2027, right? Write down the year 2027. Mm, you think that's it? Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so let's take a look. Add those four numbers up. What do you get? 11. We get 11. Is there a year before 2027 where the sum of the digits will equal 11? No. no. So we've got the first one. And we'll work with some more math vocabulary with the students from Rio Bravo right after this. Well, we're back once again at Rio Bravo School. We've got some fifth grade students working on some math vocabulary and some problems to work on with those as well. So let's take a look at the words we have in blue. Okay, even. Are you all hands shot up fast on that one, huh? All right. What, what can you tell me about even? Even is like two, four, six, eight. Okay. There, it's like like numbers that other numbers can go into and they can, it's like they're even. They're divisible by two. They're always a pair. What about odd? Do you know odd? Are you odd? <laughs> I'm only kidding. What can you tell me about odd as far as math goes? All these numbers like one, three, five, seven. Okay. And what makes What's the difference between, I mean, because even odd? It can't be multiplied by two. Okay. What about square numbers? Have you guys ever heard of square numbers? Yeah. Yes. I think it's the number two. I don't know. Well, you can use a two, and a two is used as an exponent. You guys know what exponents are? Yes. yes. Okay. So, what else? Anything else about square numbers? It's a, like a square unit. It's like kind of like an area and perimeter. Right, you will use it in area. If I did this, if I said 5 times 5, what is that? 25. It's 25. Have you ever seen it written like this? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right, there's your exponent too. So you have 5 squared, 5 to the second power, right? So the number 25 is a square number. Can you think of another square number? 12. What two numbers? Because the numbers have to be the same. You're close. Mm, I know it. If I go three times three, what is that? Nine. Nine. So is nine a square number? Yes, because it's three squared three times three. What about 16? Is that square? Yeah. Yeah. It is, right? Because it's four times four. So we've got the idea of square numbers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because sometimes it gets confusing. People add them sometimes, right? So we have to multiply the same number. A palindrome. I think I might have you on this one. Any idea what a palindrome is? I've never heard of one. Same frontwards and backwards. Oh. Here's, here's one that you might see in writing. What does that say? Mom. What does it say when you read it backwards? Mom. And swims? Swims would be... Smith whistle? Swims. swims. Upside say backwards? down is the same. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, a palindromic number is one that is the same frontwards and backwards. If I do this, 2002, isn't it the same going both ways? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So that's a palindromic number. All right. So now let's take a look at our paper again. Now we did... The sum of the digits is 11. We know that, right? We know it's 2019. The next one says the number is palindromic. 
So what will be the next year that comes up where the number will look the same either way you read it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Write it down, see what you think. Now remember, it's got to be the same going forward and backward. Would, it, would we have to, like, add years or can we stick to Nope, years? just like that. Well, we're going to go after 2019. Right? We want to know the next year this will come up. Now, if I did this, if I said next year, 2020, does it read the same way going backward? No. No, because no, then it's 0202 instead of 2020. Yeah. Right? So think about that. When is the next year that we will have a palindromic year? You think you've got it? 303? 3003. We will have a palindromic year then, but see if there's one before that. I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> 2020, 2000. <laughs> That's going to be a long time from now. <laughs> Let's keep it to four numbers, okay? Okay. It's going to be in the 2000s, I'll tell you that. Oh, God. Okay. Now, here's another thing you can do, all right? Take a look at the next one. The number is made of only prime digits. Now we know what prime numbers are, right? <laughs> so when is the next year that it will only be prime numbers in it? You think you've got it? I think it's um, 3033. Close. But we're gonna have one before that. Mm, is it 2020? Well, you've got prime digits, right? And what did you have? Two. Oh. Okay. What did you just write? You just had it. Two thousand two hundred twenty. Right in the year twenty two twenty two, that's the lowest prime number is two, right? So there you go. So we'll keep working on some of these. The fifth grade students at Rio Bravo School. back once again with the students at Rio Bravo. Fifth grade students, we were discussing a little bit about math vocabulary, and now we'll talk about mathematical symbols, because it's got its own little language, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? When you see a symbol, you know what it means. So, on your paper, let's do it this way. Write down some math symbols. Any symbols you can think of at all that have to do with math. If you think about the four basic operations, you should have four symbols right there, all right? If we think about the four basic operations, what do we have? A time symbol. Okay, now that's perfect. How do you want to represent times or multiplication? An X. Like this? Yep. Is there another way to represent times or multiplication? You could do a dot. You could do a dot. Is there another way? There's a star. There's a star, so we'll just do that, all right? Any other ways? An upside down B. So you wanna do this? Yeah. So, so that would be called a carrot, and we could raise something to a power, so we are multiplying, so we'll take that. Anything else? Have you guys ever seen this? Parentheses? Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't forget that one, that's important. So there are a lot of different signs to multiply, okay? What other signs do we have? Equal. Equal. Divide. Divide. How would you like to do divide? Because there's a few on this one. A line and dot above and dot under. Like that? How else can we represent division? Oh, I don't know. You guys have any other way to do that? Yeah. How about this? If I said nine thirds, that means the division. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you've got that <gasps> line like that. Uh, you can do like a, kind of like a box, like, but it's not a full box yet. Ah, uh, see, I've got you. All right. <laughs> oh. Have you seen a fraction written like this? Yeah. 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 So that bar means division, right? This means nine divided by three, right? Any other symbols? Have you ever seen this? 
Yes. 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 What is that? Or what does it mean? Or what do you do with it? Divide. Divide. I'm pretty sure it means dividing exponents. Have you heard of square roots? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here's how that works. If I take the square root of 25, I'm looking for the number that multiplied by itself makes 25. What number times itself makes 25? One. Well, one times one is one. Five. So, right. So the square root of 25 is equal to five. All right. So that's something because as you guys get into some older grades, you're going to be working with that symbol. Here's one more symbol. And I'll be very impressed if any of you have seen this one before. I've seen it on a calculator. Okay, that's good. Um, that I've never like seen an it. Exclamation mark. It does look like that, right? That's exactly what it is. But in mathematical, it's called a factorial. Okay, here's how the way a factorial works. If I do three factorial, okay, that's equal to you take the first number and you multiply it by all other numbers until you get to one. So it means three times two times one. What does that equal? What's three times two? Six. Six times one? Six. So three factorial is equal to six. Do you see how that works? Yeah. Okay. What I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to make an expression. Okay. You can make an equation if you want. An equation has to have a what in it? An equal sign. An equal sign. Okay, it doesn't have to have an equal sign. You can just make an expression. What I'd like you to do is just use some of the mathematical symbols and come up with an expression or an equation. Just make one up. All right, so let's take a look at what you guys have. All right, so what have you got? 10 times 2 divided by 3. Okay, and I like the way you represented some different things in there. <laughs> and are you still working on yours? Yeah. Okay, what have you got? 4 divided by 16. Okay, so 16 divided by 4, oh, right, yeah. is 4. Because 4 divided by 16, you're going to get a decimal answer. Yeah. Okay. What have you got down at the end? I got 9 times 2 equals 18 minus 7 equals 11. There you go. 100 divided by 5. 100 divided by 5? 629 divided by 4. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways we can come up with different problems based on the mathematical symbols that we're going to be using. All right? And then we'll go into a next step next time with the fifth grade students from Rio Bravo School. Once again, we're with the fifth grade students at Rio Bravo School, and we're going to be working on some more math, obviously, but this time with order of operations, okay? And raise your hand if you've ever heard of, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Do any of you actually have an Aunt Sally? You do? Excellent. I think you're maybe the second person I've ever met that really has an Aunt Sally. Well, I, don't, know, you know. I don't have one. Right. You wish you had one, right? <laughs> okay, so here's the paper that we're going to work on. And you guys can work on this individually or we're going to work on it together. All right, so let's take a look at the directions. Mm. Well, actually, can you do me a favor, read the directions? Complete this grid with the digits 1, 2, 6, each used only once. To make the sum correct, no, at no point is a decimal or a fraction used. So these are going to be the whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it says to make the sum correct. What is the sum we're looking for? 35. How do we know? It because it says it on the opposite side of the equation. Right, on the opposite side of the equation, after the equal sign, it says 35. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we see there are six blanks in here. Okay, now we have to do these order the way they have them. Okay, so it has multiplication and division at the beginning, which is good, because that's the order of operations. So you need to put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can't use any number more than once. Okay, you put the numbers in here and then go through it and see if it comes out to be 35 at the end. 
Okay? Here's an example. Let's just do it right in order. Okay? So above the box, okay, don't write these in the box right now, write it above the box. So we'll put one, two, three, and go like that. So we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six in that order, and we'll just see if that works or what it comes out to be. All right, so let's do the operations now. What is one times two? Two. two. What is two times three? Six. Six divided by four. Uh, one. That's a problem now, isn't it? Of two. Okay, yeah. now so we're going to have a decimal number in there, right? And it mm -hmm. says no decimal. Right. So let's say it's 1.5, okay, plus 5. So what's 1.5 plus 5? 6.5. 6.5. 6.5 minus 6. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Is 0. 0.5 35? <laughs> no. Long way away, isn't it? <laughs> So you see how this is going to work? Mm -hmm. So I had you put those up on the top because I didn't want you to put what you come up with in the boxes. You have erasers, so you're going to be able to, because is the first time going to work? No. Probably not. Okay. So write lightly in case you have to erase and go ahead and work on this and see if you can come up with a way that will come out to be 35. clue? Yes. Here's my clue for you. Keep trying. <laughs> That's really helpful. Well, I gave you one clue. I told you where one was. Do you want me to tell you where they all are? Yeah. That's not going to happen. At the end, I will. Remember, you can only use each number once. <gasps> Something happened. What have you got there, sister? Let's see. What number no, are you missing? I almost got it, but I was going to put a six right here, but I can't. Well, put a six there. Okay. Get rid of your other six. What's half of six? Oh. There you go. Okay, now you have two twos, though. Oh. So change that one. What do you want to make that? Four? Four. So put a four in there. All right, let's read this and see what you've got. Five times four equals 20, 20 times 3 is 60, divided by 2 is 30, plus 6 is 36, and then minus 1 is 35. There you go. Nicely done. Order of operations with the 5th grade students at Rio Bravo School. Uh -oh, we're going to have to wear the same shirt. I had these tailored. You know what that means? Perfect fit. <laughs> Perfect fit. Perfect fit or would you like a larger one? Uh, good enough. That's, okay. Perfect fit or would you like a larger one? Perfect fit. Perfect fit. That's what I thought.